of John, chapter 20. Welcome again to everybody to the house of God. There's no place that I would rather be on the Lord's day, but in the presence of God's people in God's house to hear from God's word, from God's book, and the man of God. John chapter 20. We're going to begin, <clears throat> pardon me, our reading <clears throat> at verse number 11, the Gospel of John chapter 20 and verse number 11. The Bible says, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, the, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and see two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they saw her, and they say unto her, Pardon me, woman, why weepest thou? And she saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus had said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? And she supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I'll take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabbi, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Verse number 19. Then the same day at evening, beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his, and his side, and then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Verse number 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We've seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the prince of the nails, and put my finger into the prince of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again, the disciples were within, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed, Blessed are they with, that have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus, we thank you today for the privilege of being in your house for the spirit that we've already felt. God, we pray in your word that it would go forth. God, that it would not return void, but it would accomplish where you send it today. We're quick to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. In that matchless, in that mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. This afternoon, I want to preach to you a message titled, I Can't See It. I Can't See It. Ever since the beginning of time and ever since the creation of the world, it is God who, in his infinite understanding of ours as humanity's limits and boundaries, has ceased not in seeking to instill within our hearts and minds the unseen and yet the very real element of what God feels is necessary to be existent in our lives. And that's none other than that of an absolute, a complete and a total <laughs> presence of faith. Faith is literally the key ingredient that is required for all of us in our walking with God to be able to cross over from that, that which is considered natural into the realm of none other than that of the supernatural. In this natural life, when it is you who comes up against situations and circumstances that you perceive to be beyond your control, it's in such times that it is you or we who tend to be they who quickly lose sight of the fact that just because 
In the present, shall I say, there appears not to be a solution to your circumstance just because it's you or we who do not see it. That's why in our hearts and minds, it's you who needs to get to that place in God where you don't put God in that same cookie cutter opinion that we ourselves in our lives often settle upon. And that being our defeat. When in reality, as far as God is concerned, our limits and our limitations in whatever circumstance of life that we find ourselves in, this I want you to know doesn't give any credence to an equal license and that of the mind or even of the very thoughts of God in reference to the same. God doesn't say, well, I'm limited by what you do. You know, what, what you see and perceive, oh, well, that, that's the same realm I live in. If you want to turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 58, or 53, pardon me, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, and then reading verses 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. Here Isaiah writes, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God goes beyond that atmosphere, that stratosphere. God goes beyond the infinite realm of where we dwell on this earth that he goes into the supernatural realm where he dwells and he says i'm far above it i'm far beyond where it is that you are yes. knowing this many of us do living for god just new to god knowing this it is oft times this is where we and you are the ones who settle in such a realm and and you say, well, why do you use such an expression as of we and as you? I'll tell you why. Because that is where all of us at one or another, another time, pardon me, are the one are found in that realm of our human reasoning and our limited understanding. All of us, you, me, us, where words like this leave our own mouths. Well, I can't see it. I, I can't see it. I mean, it appears to be no way out. There's no way over, there's no way around, and there's no way through that of my life circumstance that life has placed me in. I, I just don't see it, I, I can't see it. And you know what? And you say, you know, <clears throat> you don't understand. Those are usually the words that leave next uh, from our mouth. Yeah. No, no, you, no, wait a minute, no, you don't understand. See, when asked, where is your faith? Frankly, many of us in view of our circumstance would be the ones at times to say and say to ask God, well, what is faith? What is faith? Mm -hmm. You don't understand what I'm going through and, and I, don't, I don't even realize what faith is God. And today I believe that's why I feel that I felt impressed, I should say, to preach this message to you for the very reason that it has been God who ever since the beginning of time through his God's interaction with we as a people, that God has sought for ways to instill in us the very element of faith, a faith in him, a faith that yeah. holds the power to enable us when we come up against any mountain, any obstacle or circumstances in our lives, that through God, it is we who have the ability to overcome them. We have that ability to so, say, well, Amen. how can we overcome them? I'll tell you why. By our, our activating in our lives a necessary element that God desires for his people to both have and to possess. And that, my friends, is none other than the element of faith. We've got to have it in our hearts, that unseen trust, that inner confidence in God's ability to be he who meets us in our needs who answers our prayers, and it's God who has the power also in the very basics of our life mm -hmm. to forgive our sins. Yes. It's God who in his love for us offers to place within us his spirit, the Holy Ghost, in order to help us as his people, we as his church, to be able to navigate the waters we're in this world, in this present time that we are. And you look around and you see people People in our world are often floundering and they're going around in circles like goldfish 
in a bowl. They don't know where they're going. They don't know where we're heading. And, but God gives us the Holy Ghost. He gives us that insight. He gives us that faith to believe in him that he's going to help us to navigate these waters. If you think about what I'm saying for just a moment, how many times has it been in your life when it has been you and maybe even right now in this circumstance of life who, who you find yourself or found yourself in one of your situations or circumstances of life where, as far as you're concerned, you, my friend, cannot even see, shall I say, any light at the end of your tunnel. I've been there and done that. I, I can't even see right now. Where, where's this heading? Where are we going? What's going to be the end result? But as you ponder the thought, of, I just don't know. How am I going to get through this? I can't see the answer in my life state of affairs. Maybe having just lost a job, maybe it's your finances that continue to be in the garbage can, maybe it's your family situation, maybe it's your relationship with others, whatever it is, whatever it could be. I mean, almost every way that you choose to look at it, there appears to be no way out, no way around, no chance of your coming out of what state of being that you find yourself or maybe you found yourself in. And there you are, and there you're the one who says to yourself, Oh, I, I can't see it. I, I can't see it. I've looked at people before and I, and I tried to share with them and say, listen, God, God can help you. Well, no, I, I can't see it. You know, God, if you pray, if we would pray right now, God would be the one to answer your prayer. Well, well I, I, I can't see it. I don't know how he can do that because we're limited. I can't see a way out. And you know what happens oftentimes? The credit cards are maxed, the job options, options, pardon me, are few. Your family maybe might be at odds with you. Your friends might be scarce and the list would go on and on and on. But I've come to say to all of you in whatever state of affairs that you do find or maybe have found yourself in, no matter how hopeless it might appear, no matter how helpless it is that you perceive your circumstance to be. I want you to hear me today, friends. You don't have to see it. What? The light at the end of your tunnel in order for there to be one. You don't have to see it. It doesn't have to be on the wall written for you. This is where you go turn left, turn right, and it's at the end of the road. No, you don't have to see it for there to be one. Why? I'll tell you why. Because God, God is going to be the one who's going to navigate for you in the darkness or in the light. God had the Apostle Paul write in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and 1, a very familiar portion of scripture, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number one. Hebrews 11 and one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, as far as God's plan and as far as God's will and purpose for your life, for your circumstance, for your state of affairs, friend, they may not end up being or end up being the way you wanted them to be in your natural life. Because oftentimes God goes beyond your physical, your financial, your spiritual times, your trials and tests. God will take you beyond that, even though it's, it appears to be you who oftentimes is one coming up against your own proverbial wall. Just because you can't see it, your answer or the end, that doesn't mean that on the horizon there is not one, that there is not an answer to your circumstance, or it won't be God who will be the one who will settle for you or bring that necessary change in your life, that answer, that light at the end of your tunnel. God will step in, and you'll just go, well, I didn't expect it. Well, well, why didn't you expect it? Because I can't see it. That's why I didn't expect it. I believe that one major factor that each of us in our lives often have the tendency to overlook and who must come to grips with is just because, again, I can't see it doesn't mean that God isn't ready and about to answer you. And oftentimes, again, no, no, just wait a minute. I've heard it again and again in 39 years. You don't understand, nor can you realize maybe how long I have been living in this way. That my circumstance, you see, you don't even, you can't fathom. You don't walk, you've never walked a mile in my, my shoes. You don't know where I'm at right now, but I want to tell you, you can stop right there. For what it is you don't understand is your life situation and circumstance, your conclusions to life are not up to you. Nor does the end result rest in your hands. Do you ever think of that? 
God holds our life in, the, in his breath, in his very hands. God in your life can help you to literally go through nothing. Why? Because there's nothing that Jesus Christ in your life cannot do. It's not up to you. We don't, we don't decide how long we live, what we really do. We can choose our natural life's course, but it's really, at the end of the day, it's up to God. And the point I want to bring across to you is you don't have to, you don't need to. I really want to lay that out, but you don't need to see it in the natural sense for God not to be the one right now who's working on your behalf in the spiritual sense. God could be already moving. The wheels, the cogs could already be turning and God could be working in your life. In regards to your life, the answer, your answer, ultimately for God's will in your life, your estate affairs, God might be bringing you your conclusion. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe it could be the next day. And you go, wow, that just came like unexpectedly. No, because God already knew what you needed. He says he knows our prayers before our pray them, will we pray them, our thoughts even before we think them. Amen. And people say, well, how can God, how do I know that God, in the basics of life, I have, again, in years talking to people, how do I know God will forgive me? You don't know my life. You don't know where I've been. If I sat down and told you, you'd go red in the face. What significance does a tank of water have in taking care of my sin? How in the world can God, through baptism in Jesus' name, wash my sins away? Well, I can't see it, you see. The Holy Ghost, how in the world does God actually get on the inside of us and fill us with his spirit? How does he do that? And, and you know, it, it never ceases to pop in my mind when I think about the Holy Ghost and I think about my daughter when she was young when she said she goes dad is is it really true that the holy ghost is is in here i think she said it to her mom and yes it's true god god's right inside of you and she didn't get it she was like four i believe and she says get him out of there get him out take him away how did he get in there in the first place how does god come into my life and change everything i can't see it you see well, you, you just got to have that faith, you see? That's why. In order for any one of us to take what we, we or maybe what I refer to as a step of faith into the realm of the unknown, now faith is. Mm -hmm. This only happens and only will happen when you literally is willing to step out in faith by your doing it. Remember, they had that writing a few years back, just do it. We got to just step out. We got to just Trust God. You're not going to find out that realm of faith until you walk into that realm of faith. Amen. Whether you see it or not. Trusting in the miracle working hand of Almighty God. Just got to trust. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to reach out and get a hold of it. Amen. This couple sat in the front room one day and, and <clears throat> the lady looks over at her husband who's just as frustrated as he could be and says, and she says, dear, we just need to trust God. Yeah. No, no, you, you need to listen to me. See, the fact is we don't have the money to pay our rent. And how is it going to be our trusting in God that the rent's going to get paid? Well, well, why don't we maybe just stop and, and pray together and ask God for the money? Yeah. Sure. Hey, you know what? <laughs> With jobs being scarce right now, you're, you're not going to be able to work there. You know, that company just doesn't hire anybody. And well, you know what? I, I think I'm still going to apply there and, and I'll trust God. <laughs> okay, then it's up to you, buddy. Come on. How am I supposed to know that God loves me? You ever, you ever thought that question before? Let me just hang with my heart there for just a minute. How do I know that God loves me? How, how do I know that God's going to forgive me? How do I know God's going to hear my prayer? I say, I don't, I'm not going to be a church person. I, I don't go to church all the time. I haven't been in church, you know. How, how do I know? I'll tell you why. How, pardon me. By maybe reaching up in faith in order to take a hold of Jesus' nail-scarred hands. Next time that you're at that altar, why don't you maybe just reach up and take a hold of his hands? Well, I, I can't see it. Bursting into the door, the, the husband walks in to his wife in the kitchen and says, you're not going to believe this. I just got back from picking up the mail and 
There was a check in the mail for, you know, enough money to cover our rent shortage. Amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yep. Well, I, I couldn't see that. I didn't know it was coming in the mail. Hey, so how did your interview go? <laughs> if you had one. Um, well, well, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I start tomorrow. What? <laughs> what? It was that day at the altar that that young person went up there and says to his friend, you know, I, I, I remember closing my eyes and I remember reaching up in faith, believing, just like you said, that as I did, you know, God would take a hold of my hand, my hands, and the weirdest thing happened. As I pretended like I was taking Jesus' hands, you're not going to believe this. But when I did, it actually felt like Jesus was taking hold of my hand. And I experienced a feeling of a love and a forgiveness that I've never felt, nor thought I could ever have felt before. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what you call now faith. Yes. I, I just didn't know. that if I you know, stepped out of my box, my comfort zone, and I went to church, and, and, I, and I just talked to God, that God would actually hear me, and he would talk back to me. That he'd know I'm right there. He knew where I was. He knew when I walked in the door, he was just waiting to meet me. Amen. That's called now faith. Amen. See, in our scriptural text, beginning with John chapter 20, the gospel of John 20, verse 24, the Bible says, but Thomas was not with them when Jesus came. How many times can you sit across the table from people and say, you won't wait this happened. God did this for me. This is how God was. Oh, man, it was great. Yeah, well, well I wasn't there. You know, I can't see it. The disciples explained to Thomas what they had seen and, and they'd seen Jesus and together they had seen the nail prints in his hands and in his side and Thomas in the total rejection to the words that he was hearing declared, except I shall see the nail prints in his hands and thrust my hand in the, into his side. I'm not going to believe. I can't see it. Well, listen, Thomas, we hear what you're saying, but you know, <laughs> You don't, you don't understand. No, I can't see it. It just doesn't sound real. What if he was an imposter, you know, a fake, and, and you all fell for it? No, no, Thomas, it was Jesus. Like we all said that, you know. I'm sorry, guys. I can't see it. I can't. But verse 26 and 27 of John chapter 20, the Bible says, and after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Here's how God knows who you are. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. I couldn't see it. So, so why? Here we go. Why do so many preachers, evangelists preach on the subject of faith? Why? Because sometimes, sometimes it's you who, like Thomas, needs to be the one yourself to get to the place where it's you who lays aside your doubt and your fears. And instead be the one to activate that unseen faith. In God, in order for God to be able to release into your life the power of that now faith. That's why. why. Why are you always talking about faith? Now faith, faith. I've heard that scripture a hundred times, thousand times. Now faith, faith. Well, get yourself into a corner, honey. Get yourself into a predicament in life that you can't see a way out. And then let this, this service today or the other times you heard it pop into your mind. I can't see it. We talk about faith all the time. Well, because... It happens. Mm -hmm. Times when you say you can't see it, whatever it is, at any given time when you're asking or petitioning God, then you vocalize it, friend. Mm -hmm. Why don't you listen to this? You vocalize it in front of those doubting Thomases. Yeah, I, I'm with you. <laughs> Ain't no way. That, that can never happen. And they themselves, they can't see it either. Yeah, yeah. And they... Put that into your mind. Yeah, God can't help you. It's too late. Yeah. 
Instead of resting your thoughts on what you can't see, it should be you who should be the one to allow God to be able to, in the realm of the unseen faith, yours, to get to where that negative voice is silenced so that you and your faith are able to be actively ready to receive what it is that you and faith petition God for. You got to go, no, no. When you go to church today, you're not getting the Holy Ghost. When you go to church today, God ain't talking to you. You've been bad. You know what? When you, when you talk to God in your prayers, he's going to go, la, la, la. That's going to be God. No, he's not. And you go la 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 to you and you walk into that church or you in your prayer closet, you lift up your hands and suddenly you feel that warmth in your hands and you go, wait a minute, I couldn't see it, but God's right here. God hurt me. God loves me. And you walk out of your 10 feet tall knowing that you were never alone. Amen. You're not alone. He's here. He's in the house. He's in your heart. He wants to come home with you. Thank you, Jesus. Won't you hear what I'm saying? It become those outside influence along with your lack of faith in believing. In believing what God wants to do, what he desires to do in your life that can have the power to cause you to miss out on your miracle. Miss out on your promise or what it is in faith you've asked for God to do. You ever done that? We, we sing a song, uh, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. I can tell you, time as a young Christian, especially as a bad young Christian, I'd go up and I'd get prayed for. You know, maybe I'm sick or I've got a need in my life. And instead of leaving it there at the altar, instead of just putting it into God's hands, what do I do? What do we have done? We pick it up, don't we? And we just take it back right. and we keep it. Right, come on. Well, I thought you said you had faith. Well, you know, I'm not healed yet. I'm not. I'm still sick. It didn't happen. I couldn't see it. I don't see how God could do this. But you know, in such times as those, if you're not careful, you'll be the one who sits there and misses out what God wants to do for you. How can we oftentimes, here's a hot one, how can we oftentimes always believe God for others, but we cannot believe God for ourselves? Yes. You sit there across that coffee table, you know what? <laughs> I believe God. <laughs> He can help you. You know, God's going to answer your prayer, friend. Yep, he sure will. But on the flip side, there you are, standing in need of an answered prayer, seeking from God when you can't believe it for yourself. Right. How's God going to do it for me? I wonder if we have any honest folks, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, God will do it for you, friend. There you are in the hospital. There you are, the one that's really sick. There you are, the one who just lost your job. You're in trouble. Oh, God will help you. <laughs> now it's your turn. How can God help me? I can't, I can't see it. Mm -hmm. Come on now. How can God hear my prayers when the truth is I can't see it myself? Why? Because our eyes in the natural are open but our eyes in the spiritual are closed. Instead of saying, God, we had a lady in our church, still around sometimes, and she used to always say, well, uh, God, you drive. You take the wheel. And, and then Carrie, whatever her name is, she came up and sang a song about Jesus, take the wheel. Well, I'll let God drive. Why don't you let God drive? Why don't you just let him take a hold of it? Sit back and just let go. I can't let go. I've got a visa. I can't let go. My master, well, the master card's full. Okay, well, I've got American Express. Why don't you just let, why don't you just trust God? Amen. According to the writing of the Apostle Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse number 20. It says, for all of the promises of God, how many? All of them. All of them in him are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us through none other than the power of faith. Yours. All the promises. He, he's not restrictive. I'll tell you what, this week I'll give you these two, but forget the third one. No, God will give you what you need. See, in order for God to forgive you, to wash away your sins, in order for God to answer your prayers and meet your needs, whether or not you can see it or not, the ingredient that makes it happen, are you hearing me, is going to be the power of a now faith in your life. That's what's going to get the job done. 
You just got to trust God. When I walk in here today and realize that I messed up, I'm in trouble. Maybe I came in here and I'm hurt and I'm lonely. Maybe you're financially strapped. Whatever your circumstance of life is, when you come before God, when you petition him, you got to just let that faith, that now faith, your now faith, open up that door instead of standing up against the wall saying, I can't see it. God has the power to answer your prayer, to turn your situation around. That's without you first having to see it. You said that, I know. Sometimes that's repetitive. Sometimes we've got to say, the, why? Because I can't see it, that's why. You sit there and you cross your arms going, oh, but I can't see it. You don't have to see it, that's why. You see, as, as a church and as a people of God, we're the ones who in such times who need to be able to step out in those uncharted waters. You ever done that before? Just trust God. We hear stories and I've heard stories of days and years gone by. People said, I had my last 20 in my wallet, you know? And I took that $20 bill and because God told me to give it and I put it in the offering. I'm thinking, but that was that was my food money for tomorrow. That was my lunch money for the week, that 20, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. And, and I went and threw it in the offering plate because God told me to. But I can't see how, can, can you loan me 50? That's not what you gotta do. And so that person, many times, you hear them, they walked out of church or uh, somebody got them on the phone and said, you know what, God just told me to give this to you. And so, so here's a hundred bucks. I don't know what you need it for, but there you go. Here's a 50, and, but I only threw in 20. Well, I couldn't see it. And, and I was scared to give it to God. I was afraid to put it in the offering because I didn't know where the money was going to come from because I didn't know if God could really hear me. Yeah. yeah. So None of us, I believe, where we are today, in 2021 of November have ever crossed such times as these as before. Times where, you know, God, how is God going to take us from here, ladies and gentlemen, to there, wherever there might be? How are you going to get from here? Look around you. There is so much turmoil and troubles. How are we going to get there in order for God to be able to allow us to experience maybe a revival in our lives, a revival in our church, in order for you as a child to experience in your life what occurs in the realm of the unseen? How are we going to get from here to there? The realm of your now faith, the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not. How are you going to get there? Can I tell you? I don't know. You don't know, but you're the pastor. Well, I don't know. You know who has, you know who knows? Who knows? God knows. Amen. That's how we're going to get there. See, no matter how long you've lived your life for God, <clears throat> for you to be able to experience everything I'm talking to you about this afternoon, you cannot be, you cannot continue to be the one who sits back like a doubting Thomas, declaring how you can't see it. I can't. Because the scriptures record for us the words of the Apostle Paul again in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 this time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9. The Bible says, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You see, that's why. You see, Amen. you don't need to see it. That's why, because God loves you. What he's prepared for you, what God's, is, God's going to do for you. Well, it didn't happen at Friday at five o'clock. Well, that's your time. That's not God's time. You know, God always shows up right on Time. Did you, yeah. Let's look at the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. This is a, a familiar but a very awesome scriptural text and reference. It's 2 Kings chapter 6. And this, this is the story of Elisha and the servant the, where the king of Syria had sent horses and chariots and a great host to get Elisha, the man of Go get him. And you bring him here. So a great for one man, go get him and you drag him over here. Verse number 15 and 16 of 2 Kings 6, the Bible says, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto Elisha, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he, Elisha, answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than be with them. Well, I should look. Look at all of them. We're surrounded, and I don't see how there could be more with us than them. I don't know how you're going to get out of that. Yeah, I don't either. I don't know what you're going to do. Well, I don't either. I can't see the, the, the end of the forest for the trees. And I, I don't know either. How are we going to do this? But verse number 17, the Bible says, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, 
I pray thee open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. Hey, I knew all along it was going to happen like that, you know. I knew it would work out. God was going to be on our side. Really? That check comes. That answer comes. Something happens and turns your circumstance around. You get a phone call from somebody. They offer you a job, and you're going, <laughs> well, I, I knew all along. I knew all along. Really, Thomas? No, I don't know if you did. Jesus declares in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 20, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this, your mountain, be thou removed, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. But I can't see it again. But as long as your mindset, listen to this, remains in the mode and concerns to God and all that God can do in and through you, that you can't see it, I believe you won't. I can't trust him. I can't believe in him. He can't do this. He won't do this. Well, Maybe he won't. I mentioned the other day in preaching to you that God's not a respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of desire. See, it doesn't matter what it is that you're up against. It doesn't matter how long you've been in your current circumstance or situation or estate. If God be for you, who can be against you? The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, the book of Galatians, chapter 6, and verse number 9. It says, Be not weary in well doing, for in due season we, you, we, you shall reap if you faint not. Don't, don't get afraid. Don't get the cart in front of the horse. The horse is supposed to pull the cart. You don't put it in front. Don't get your, your, your mind all in knots and your anxiety going out the roof and, and your frustration just driving you over the bend. Don't be weary in well-doing. In due seats, God's going to open up that way for you. Luke writes in Luke chapter 12 and, and verse number 32. Luke chapter 12 and... Verse 32. It says, Fear not, little flock, for it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. As far as the eternal, as far as your eternity in heaven are concerned, John writes in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Very familiar portion of scripture. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. The words of Jesus, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you might be also. I, I, I can't see it. You ever think about it? You ever stop, and especially where we are in this end time, where we are in this world, and say to yourself, oh, oh, will I make it to heaven? You think, you think I'm going to go there? You think God's going to let me go there? <laughs> Do you think after serving him all these years? I, did, I have made mistakes, you know. And, and, you know, and I did forget to pray last week. <laughs> Just, you know, got real busy and stuff. And <coughs> let not your hearts be troubled. Because God's going to go to prepare a place for you. Jesus Christ, who wants you to know, is the one today who stands at the door of your heart, your house, and he's knocking Declaring, if any man hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. You hear that? I wonder what promise, what miracle, what door is it that you came today desiring for God either to answer, perform, or to open up for you? What is it you came today? I just want to hear from God. Well, God's trying to talk to you. I just want God to, to listen to my hurt and pain and, and what I'm going through. Well, God is. He's listening to you right now. He's waiting for you to talk to him. Whatever it is that you desire, as I've already said, can be what occurs in your life. If you'd only stop saying in your mind, in your inner heart, I can't see it. Would you stand with me today? If I just stop using those Four words, I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't, I can't see it. 
In the darkness of your room, ladies and gentlemen, friends, saints today, Jesus Christ in your darkness wants to bring you light. As you pray today, maybe as you close your eyes and just open up your mind to God, why don't you say, why don't you be the one to say, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Let, let me see what I can't see. Let me feel, baby, what I've never felt before. Why don't you take me to that realm today, God? Where everything's going to be okay. You've heard it said how many times that God may not give you what you want, but God will give you what you need. Would you pray with me today? Maybe close your eyes, bow your head, say, God, if I can't see it, would you help me to see it? God, would you help me today? To understand that there's more with us than with them.